Welcome to our program today. We're discussing a few things with our guest, uh, Dr. Ian Kama, and uh, on a few fundamental things that we have touched before. We have heard that uh, there are quite an, some rumors we have been going around that uh, uh, some people they used to say uh, you are funding some terrorist groups. Uh, would you mind just to to hint us or to to highlight us on on what 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 really transpired uh, as far as uh, you know these allegations are concerned? You know, if it wasn't so serious, it would be like we're on Comedy Central because it's something you could laugh at or cry about um, because having been in office uh, we were one of those who were in the forefront joining others in the international community to fight against terrorism but the one question that hasn't been answered is that fine even though we're saying it's a blatant lie which it is there must be details that which terrorist organization are we funding? Has it come to the notice of other international bodies tasked with fighting terrorism, whether it's in Interpol or at the UN or wherever, mm. or other countries who we know are on the forefront? Is my name there registered somewhere that this man is funding terrorism? So there, there's always a trace, but these statements are just made what we are seeing in our country now, blatantly like that, just to discredit you and try to bring down your reputation. So that's my answer, is that it's just, um, it's just a laughing matter, but it is very serious. Mm. And that's why we are going to um, take action of a serious nature against those making, making those allegations. I know that a lot has been going on uh, around yourself with uh with Mr. Masisi, uh, you know, well, both of you now, you're now former presidents now. Uh, so, have you been in touch with uh, with Mr. Masisi ever since you, you you returned back, or no? Has he been reaching out into you to try and uh, have a dialogue with yourself uh, that maybe you can resolve whatever differences that you had? I and mean, also, are there any adults or you know um, some elders who have been involved? to try and mediate. I mean, it's difficult under these circumstances. There are other people who are trying to bring that about. But, you know, when people are fabricating this, doesn't that sort of like put a stop or a wall or a roadblock between any attempts? Because every time people have tried to make those attempts, these kind of, this kind of harassment and intimidation is their answer. And therefore, under those circumstances, clearly, they have no interest. They just want to perpetuate the situation. Um, but as I say, it's going to backfire on them because now they've taken it a step too far where they've done things now, they've entered into the, the legal realm of issues and they've been found to be uh, dishonest and that's going to be exposed and then we are going to be coming after them through the courts as a result. So right now, what is your next move politically? Um, are you still going to uh, to continue with your political duties, or uh, can you highlight this on, on that? No, no, I'm not involved. I really, when I, as you know, when I came into this, into politics, uh, I did it reluctantly. It, politics wasn't something I wanted to do as a career path, um, but I was asked uh, to come in, and I, I, I gave up a a job or career that I was enjoying immensely in the military um, and so when when my term of office ended um, I was felt very free to get on with uh, with my life um, had it not been for what's been going on I wouldn't have had to come back and be involved in, in, in politics but even today as we speak this is not a political issue this is a personal issue where I am being uh, uh, framed by a, 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 a government and therefore my response is not political either. So the campaigning is over, the elections are over, I'm just wanting to get on with my life. Um, I'm going to set up a foundation uh, which will be a watchdog for democracy in Botswana because I've learnt that um, we need to have something like this in place 
based on what has been happening in the country in recent times. How do you end these allegations drifting around uh, Mrs. Radevi? Of course, uh, I think you've suffered extensively. Well, I think you've suffered extensively. The matter has to end. Uh, how do you end it? By, you know, it's going to be turbulent for now as we expose this rot. Um, when we take it to court, which is, and you know that that process takes a bit of time, but there'll be light, there is light at the end of the tunnel because when it all comes out and people have to answer for these crimes that they are committing of perjury amongst others, um, then life will go on as it was before. So it's been very unfair on her, especially as she's been one of those, this time people don't know about, who's been the forefront of trying to seek reconciliation for what is going on in Botswana. And yet she's been treated so badly just because our two families um, have known each other and been together for so long. So um, uh, I take my hat off to her. She's a very strong uh, uh, person and she's, she's weathered this storm and um, uh, she's going to get through it. And at the end of the day, we'll all be, it'll all be smiles uh, when this is all over in our favor. Thank you for your time and we appreciate that we know that you've got a busy schedule but uh, thank you very much and I'll say uh, once more thank you viewers for watching our program. Thank you.